Now, our piece with Cyrus Christie yesterday obviously got us thinking about racism in Ireland and what we're doing as a country to stop discrimination and to promote diversity. We got the thoughts of Labour TD Ian O'Reardon, Sport Against Racism Ireland co-founder Ken McHugh and Phelan Warren of Ireland Supporters Group, Why Big? It's funny that, you know, sorry if you're not Irish, but I was born in England or whatever it might be, but I don't see the likes of Richard Keogh or I didn't see the likes of Harry Ott. I didn't see the other lads that Kieran Clark or whoever it might have been that were born in England. No one was saying that same stuff to them, but me, David McGoldrick, Callum Robinson, the, the three black lads, it's coming at us that, that same way. We're, we're the ones that are getting spoke about like that. And, you know, that's just one little minor issue, but, but people won't realise that because they're not in our position. Cyrus Christie there speaking on OTBAM this week as he revealed the true extent of the racist abuse he has suffered while playing and training for Ireland. Now, we wanted to know what more can be done to deal with these incidents when they come to light, but also how we can do better as a country to stop them from ever happening in the first place. Here's Labour TD Aon O'Reardon. So I think in Ireland we, we sometimes end up with the best supporters in the world and all the rest of it. But I, I've been made feel uncomfortable at Ireland matches when there's, there's a guy from an opposing team who's played for Rangers and he gets booed every time he touches the ball. And there's there's an element to that which, which doesn't sit easily with me. Um, and you, you've been, I've been at matches where people say things in the heat of the moment and, 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 you, and you can feel uncomfortable about, about it. But, you know... This is, this is something that has really affected uh, other societies uh, and other football cultures. And we have had maybe a kind of a, a self-satisfied view of our own support base for the Irish national team, that we're the best fans in the world, that we're a great crack and wherever we go, everybody loves us. But that doesn't mean that we can't look at ourselves um, in a very self-critical fashion. Phelan Moran of supporters group You Boys in Green reckons Irish fans can be self-critical. I'd like to think that, that, that those people at the matches, and in my experience, if, if, if Irish fans have caused trouble, you know, acting the maggot or, you know, just having too much to drink and acting the maggot, they, they are usually called out on it and, and they're, they're persuaded, shall we say, to, to, to stop. Um, but I think some of, as we know, it, racism comes down to education or lack of, but I think repercussions have, have to be realistic as well and have to be implemented. There has to be repercussions in this day and age for 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 racist behaviour and like I say, the fact that no case was was pursued against the, that adult in inverted commas who who racially abused Sardis online, the fact that no action was taken against him, it's just not good enough. If there's no if there's no punishment, well, there's, there's no deterrent. One of the more shocking revelations from Cyrus Christie this week was that he was once racially abused by a kid in the company of a teacher after an Ireland training session. I was a kid, yeah, which was that's why it shocked me. It's come from a kid, so as much you don't want to blame the kid, so it's obviously coming from the parents, in my mind anyway. I mean, you may think different, but I'm a kid saying that. And then what shocked me the most is that obviously he's there with the teacher. The teacher didn't say nothing. She allowed it. Let's hear from Ken McHugh, co-founder of Sport Against Racism Ireland. That doesn't surprise us, by the way, because we have come across this quite a lot. We've got a, sorry, has a program called Football Versus Discrimination. Uh, which goes into schools uh, around the country. Last year we did it. Uh, we we touched um, nine thousand over nine thousand boys and girls in in around the twelve year old uh, bracket as well. The last year in primary schools. Unfortunately, the um, the Department of Justice uh, didn't didn't see the value of that, so cut our funding. So we have to rely on funding from UEFA, the Foundation for Children. If there is a safe space, if that child fe feels as if there's a safe space for him or her to say that to Cyrus Christie, but then that's all of our collective fault, that we've, we've created this safe space uh, for racism. But look, what kind of society did, uh, do we live in? You know, that, you know, sport is a reflection of society. Do we have a, a huge number of people in the guards who are of various different ethnic, ethnic backgrounds? I don't think we do. Do we have enough people in politics? We don't. Do we have enough people who appear in national media? We absolutely don't. Do we have enough nurses? We, we have enough doctors? We possibly do in the medical profession, but we certainly don't have them in teaching. So if, if the role models in somebody's life are all very much of, a, of, of one background, and you're, you're not exposed to diversity in people who are, who are taught leaders or are, are, are leaders in your life, be it a teacher or, or be it a guard or be it somebody on television, then 
there's a, there's a safe space for that kind of comment. I think in Ireland, it's it's still, you know, the, I I still think there's there's still a bit of a too much of a, a tolerant attitude to maybe uh, casual racism in the form of jokes or asides or stuff like that. The, the fact that this this young child could could be at a, a training um, session and and subjects sorry to, to, or anybody for that matter to racist abuse, and the chances are that that child is is an offspring of somebody who grew up watching Chris Hewton, Terry Field and Paul McGrath, Phil Babb, who's, who obviously they're, they're rightly idolised. But for that child to, to verbally abuse anybody, it's, it's just, it's, it's depressing to be honest. And it, again, it, I've passed by the GPO in, in the last number of weeks and to, to see these so-called patriots, you know, trying to, spread their bile and their racism in, in our capital city and wrapping the tricolours around them with the same stuff, it's, uh, it's depressing to say the least. There, there are still too many sort of, you know, representations of Ireland in the sporting world. Uh, and indeed, I, I mentioned the guards, I mentioned teaching, which are not reflective of that new Ireland. So it's, it's very unusual to come across a GA player, for example, at inter-county level particularly, uh, who comes from, from a community um, that is different to what we're used to 20, 30 years ago. What kind of outreach is being done there? Um, what kind of outreach or what kind of proactive anti-racism strategies are being done uh, throughout society? Education, of course, is one of the ways of combating racism. And Christy says what we learn as kids simply isn't good enough. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one because obviously I wouldn't say I'm fully educated on it. But I can only go off my experiences because when you're growing up, you don't actually learn about the different systematic oppression growing up. As you know, you learn about the certain things in history and class or whatever, but none of it is anything to do with black history. You don't learn about all the different kinds of stuff that has happened. Like when we go to schools, like first of all, they, there is no such a thing as a human rights module in teacher training, which has been calling for for years. So teachers haven't a clue then. So you get you get somebody a counsellor um, down in, in Leash. Uh, it's a decent decent skin. Was having a problem with two major texts. Uh, one is one is uh, is called the uh, the um, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, and and the other is a uh, um, what's the other one? Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men. So the uh, like these are two two of the most powerful anti-racist texts available on the curriculum. And yet, at the same time, teachers are not uh, armed to, uh, to be able to deal with questions from the classroom. I don't think, I think they see sport as purely recreational tool, you know, compared to other countries like the Germans, for example. We, I work a lot with, with, with in Germany with the, uh, with the German Olympic uh, Confederation and also in the schools as well. I've done workshops in universities and schools in Germany where they see sport as a, uh, has a, that sport has a social responsibility. Uh, whereas here, it's not regarded as such. It's kids be lucky to get half an hour, an hour at the max in PE, for example. Completely ignored. We squeeze in, or we used to, when we had the funding, we used to squeeze into RE. So religious education then also presents problems, particularly in national schools, where we produce the curriculum for the, t for the principal. Once he sees homophobia on the curriculum, it's dropped. So as a result, they're not getting the full Monty in terms of all forms of discrimination. You know, homophobia is the first cousin of racism, first cousin of sectarianism. So the kids are not, are not being exposed to that. Combating blatant racism has many issues in Ireland. Cyrus Christie was racially abused online after the Denmark game in 2017. And despite knowing the identity of the perpetrator, it did not help his case. And the weirdest thing was his, his profile was there for everyone to see. And then obviously when the, the guard had come in and supposedly said they were going to deal with it, absolutely done and done nothing, you know. So that's where you where you give up. And I've spoken to it so many times with so many people. I can understand why people don't say anything because it, it never gets that way from any association to whoever it may be, the, the police, whatever it might be. They, they don't do enough. They don't even... They, they come to a certain point where, because it's more high profile, they look like they want to do something, and, but it's more to, I think, to benefit themselves. Up until now, it's a, it's a Mickey Mouse setup. You know, the, the guards are hamstrung. 
absolutely. That is a they have a unit um, dealing with the diversity. Uh, it's a handful of people in Harcourt Terrace uh, who are who are frustrated. They're banging their heads off the wall because they don't have the legislation to catch these people who are constantly uh, uh, breaking the law, the law that should be there and uh, can kind of just turn the nose off the, uh, the guards. In the case of the second case where with Cyrus Christie, um, where he was abused after the, uh, the, the own goal, which wasn't his fault, uh, he, uh, the t- a 20 year old was, was uh, brought up in front of the, um, the guards and the guards sent it to the, uh, he was interviewed, guards sent it to the DPP, DP, DP, DPP threw it out because legislation didn't cover it. Now, we believe that the likes of the, the Football Association of Ireland, for example, basically made a statement, but never put pressure on the guards. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not a, it, that's his association. Maybe the PFA is, PFA in England should have been, like, a Derek lax as well, because we know from their, their reports from our colleagues in the UK that the PFA are very slow to act on it. And they have all these slogans, like, shall raise and red card and kick it out and all that. But that's no use if, they, if there's, there's no education programme sustainable education program but that's what we do like red card would teach us that something like uh, smoking is bad for you but uh, we teach it to help to stop smoking when someone from my family actually rang to to find out what was going on they said we actually don't have a case we we don't even have a department to deal with this so you know it, you're you're fighting a losing battle there really and, and now i can see why people don't ever ever try and pursue anything well the, the education side is the carrot you know the, the the legislation is a stick Right. So for years, uh, Sport Against Race has been trying to get the, the Department of Justice to uh, to transfer the uh, McPherson, what they call the McPherson principles from the, the, the UK, including the North of Ireland, of course, down to the Republic under the Belfast Agreement. It's possible to do that. But they, we have been completely ignored by them. I even went to the trouble of hiring uh, Imran Khan, uh, who was the solicitor who was the brief dealing with the um, Lawrence family after the uh, murder of Stephen Lawrence, the racist murder of Stephen Lawrence. And that's how the McPherson report came about. And it's fine, it would work very well in the Republic, but there's absolutely no way that they will tolerate that something coming out from the north of Ireland, despite the fact that we're supposed to have a level playing field on, on policing. And in fact, the, the new um, chief, uh, the commissioner, has policed Harris Commissioner Harris has policed a uh, uh, crime in the north of Ireland. And he's incredibly frustrated because somewhere in the Department of Justice, the, either the ministers or the civil servants are blocking the, the uh, progress of, a, of hate crime and hate speech legislation. We have to link public funds then to what sporting organisations are doing in this sphere. We have to say to the GEA or to the FAI or to the IRFU, you know, you're getting state money and what you're doing in sport is so powerful. But Tell us what you're doing. What outreach are you doing to ensure that you're not just not racist, you're actually actively anti-racist? I tried. I, like I said, we, we approached every single Department of Justice uh, minister for the last 10 years, I would say, even more. And we've just got pawned off. Uh, they point us in the direction of the, uh, the Prohibition of Incitement of Hatred Act. It's totally inadequate. Like, I think we had something like um, nine or ten prosecutions and maybe two or three pro- uh, convictions. There can be a comfort zone, I think, certainly in politics, uh, for this kind of flippant remark. We get flippant remarks about, ca- uh, about travellers all the time in politics. We get flippant remarks about, uh, uh, about, um, about, about migrants and about asylum seekers and about uh, direct provision centres, but because it's not organised, we feel we have a free pass. Because we don't have sort of a, a BNP or, or, or a mainstream sort of political entity that is that is pushing this agenda, a neo-Nazi type party, mm. uh, that we feel we're okay. Um, but it's, it never ne- it never starts there. It starts with a comment that is not that is not challenged, and then that moves to a comfort zone, and that becomes a narrative and a belief system. And then, and then before you know it, you have a whole generation of young Irish men and women, but generally young Irish men, who feel this country has just rejected me because this is my country. I grew up in this country, but it doesn't. They're telling me I'm not Irish. There's definitely an influence coming from the alt right, because their language is obviously their language. So kids, in particular, are picking it up. 
And again, if there's no education in schools uh, to, to combat it, sure, what's, it's an open season. If we allow that, as I spoke earlier about, about that safe space, that comfort zone for somebody to be racist, there is a, a short step between that and an incident that happens in the States when a police officer feels it's a comfort zone for him to interact with somebody from the African-American community in a more aggressive way than he would with somebody from his own community. It's a small step. Uh, Owen Sheen put that report together, obviously, over the last um, 24 hours. Um, it's very powerful stuff from people who fully understand exactly what they're talking about and the dangers of us tolerating this. Yeah, to, um, that, that last line from Ed on or on there about the very small step between the, the police brutality we see in the United States and what we're actually experiencing here mentally, it's a, it, it's a very small step. And God, it, it's, it's only when you speak to them how you kind of realise how unbelievably vigilant we have to be of this and how it's way bigger than just Cyrus Christie taking abuse. It, it is it's so ingrained in certain elements of society and it's getting worse is a thing like the, that that's the point that sari make that uh, that that ken made in in the rest of our chat yesterday as well that they hoped to have done themselves out of business at some point in the last 20 years hasn't been the case if anything it is getting much much worse and there are a few obvious reasons for that social media being one of them and then you hear what or weird on the same there as well about the the lack of a, a far right party in ireland but it doesn't mean that there isn't a bubbling of far right tendencies within Ireland to the point where that could become a scary reality one day. Yeah, the point about the, the language being fairly easily identified and connected to the alt right was uh, was pretty chilling. But it is also the language of um, <clears throat> mainstream political discourse. It turns out over the last twenty four hours, it certainly has been. Uh, you know, I mean, we all saw what Leo Varadkar tweeted yesterday. It's thirty four minutes past eight this morning here on OTBAM.